The claim is that weights, grams of quarters made after 1964, have a mean equal to 5.670 grams as required by mint specifications. The sample size is n equals 39 and the test statistic is t equals negative 3.331. Use technology to find the p-value. Based on the result, what is the final conclusion? And then use a significance level of 0 0.10. Okay, well first let's highlight the claim. So the claim is that the weights of grams of quarters made after 1964 have a mean equal to 5.670 grams. Now let's write and identify the information. Well, we know that the sample size n is equal to 39. And we know that the test statistic t is equal to negative 3.3 three three one and we know that it has a mean value equal to five point six seven zero so that's going to be the population mean which is five point six seven zero okay now we need to check our requirements okay now with the requirements with the study design that's used we can treat the sample as a simple random sample. And number two, the second requirement is that the population is normally distributed or that the size of the sample is greater than 30. Well, the sample size is 39, so the second requirement is satisfied and there is no need to investigate the normality of the data. Therefore, both requirements are satisfied. Okay, now let's state the claim and the opposite of the claim. Okay, so we know that the claim is that the mean value was equal to 5.670. And the opposite of the claim is that the mean would not equal 5.670. Okay, so we know that the null hypothesis always contains the equality. And so therefore, we would say that mu is going to equal 5.670. And therefore, the alternative is going to be the population mean is not equal to 5.670. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So we know that the mean is going to be equal to 5.670 and not equal to 5.670. Check our result and there's our answer. Now what is the test statistic? Well we're given a test statistic already but let's just keep following this format here. So when we use the alternative hypothesis to determine whether it is a left, right, or two-tailed distribution since it not equals then we would say that this is a two-tailed test. Okay, and then what else do we know? We know that the significance level in the problem here, it says the level of 0 0.10, so therefore alpha is equal to 0 0.10. Okay, now what is the test statistic? Well, the test statistic is given in the problem as negative 3.331, okay? And it's asking us to round to two decimal places. So technically that's going to be negative 3.33. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So we have negative 3.33. Now we need to determine the p-value. So since we're going to do the p-value, then we want to draw our curve and label our curve. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to draw and label our bell curve. We know that we have a mean of 0. And we know that the test statistic is negative 3.33. 
and that is t equals negative 3.33. Now, since it's a two tail, that means we have two tails and the area of one of them needs to be multiplied by two. So in order to find the p-value, we're going to find the probability of when that t-test statistic is going to be less than or equal to negative 3.33. And then when we find that p-value, we're then going to then multiply that by 2. But when we find the p-value, we need to round that to three decimal places. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and then open up StatCrunch. Okay, so it's a t-test statistic, so we want to go to stat calculators, and then we're going to select the t-calculator. Okay, and so what we're going to need to do in order to find the uh, p-value is that we also need the degrees of freedom. So let's go back up and take a look at the fact that the sample size is 39. So we need to take 39 subtract 1 to get 38 for the degrees of freedom. So we're going to put in here the degrees of freedom, which is 38, and then we have less than, and then we're going to put in negative 3.33. Let's put in 33, 3, sorry, there, 3.33. And then we're going to round that to three decimal places. So we get a p-value of 0 0.001. Now, since it's two-tailed, we need to multiply it by two. So two times 0 0.001 is equal to 0 0.002. So let's go ahead and put that p-value in here, 0 0.002, and there's our answer. Okay, now we need to determine what is the conclusion. Okay. So in order to figure out the conclusion, we first need to compare the p-value with the significance level. So if we're using the p-value method, we're going to use this scenario over here on the left to determine whether we reject the null or fail to reject the null. We know that the p-value is 0 0.002, and then we're comparing it to the significance level of 0.10. And so we can see here that the p-value is less than the significance level. And we reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level. Otherwise, we would fail to reject. But in this case, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. And then we're going to come back up here to determine the rest of the conclusion. And you can see here that the claim includes equality. So since the claim includes equality, then when we take a look at the four choices of our conclusion, the first two says it does not include equality, so we can eliminate those two. And then it includes equality, and we rejected the null, which means it's going to be that one. So we would say that there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection the claim that followed by the original claim. So based on the p-value, there is, again, we said that there is sufficient evidence at a significance level of 0 0.10 to warrant rejection of the claim that weights of quarters made after 1964 have a mean equal to 5.670 grams as required by mint specifications. Check our answer, and there's our result.